All right, so we found out some new info about Tifa Lockhart and Square having an ethics department that I think is worth talking about for a minute. Let's get into it. Pathetic earthlings. Who can save you now? Flash! Ah! Savior of the universe! Strange object imaged in the Imperial Vortex. Okay, so we've got some new news when it comes to Tifa Lockhart. So... Apparently, Square Enix has an ethics department, which we're going to get into, which is weird. And I guess they actually go in and look at games and approve things. So before we get into it, a little quick backstory here. There's been two branches of people, <laughs> crazies over in Reset Era, who say that her chesticles are too big. And then you have people on the other side that are saying they're too small. A lot of argument over the sports brawl. That's been a big thing. And there's some fair points, more so from the people that, <laughs> that think that uh, they should be bigger. Reset Air is just crazy. I Nothing they say makes sense, and they're weirdos. So I'm not going to give them the time of day. We're going to talk about the controversy over her sports brawl that's been going on with people and the ethics department, which really blows my mind that Square Enix has an ethics department. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you just call it the NPC checklist department? Because that's what it kind of comes off as. And they only have this department because of North America, I promise you. But let's go ahead and take a look at some of these articles. I got two that I pulled up, one from Bounding in the Comics and one from One Angry Gamer. And they've pretty much looked into this. A lot of this came from a Polygon article, which I'd rather not highlight. So we'll just go through them. So let's start off here. So what is an ethics department? A lot of you might be asking. So according to one of your gamer, Niche Gamer picked this up from Polygon, where it was explained that in Square Enix Japan Studios, the ethics department is actually a group within the company that evaluates game content to make sure it is aligned with the anticipated age ratings standards across the globe. And then they got here C-E-R-O-E-S-E-R-B-P-E-G-I. If you don't know what these are, uh, you can see the game scrolling. You see an E for everyone. You see a teen on Ultimate Alliance 3 there. That's so, you know, certain age groups can only play a game. And it gets confusing because some countries have different standards. And they point it out right here. Uh, basically, what's T for teen in the Americas could very well be PEGI 12 in Europe. Or what's R18 plus in Australia might only be teen in the Americas. Or what's PEGI 16 could end up being mature by the ESERB. And you never really know. So apparently, as they point out here, this is basically a pre-censorship department. They comb through the content and look for material that they think might be offensive. And then make suggestions to the team in order to keep the creative departments in line with their own internal standards. So basically, what they're doing is trying to make sure that the content of the game will get the appropriate age rating for every single evaluation board. So when the game comes to North America, it'll get passed on the age they want. If it goes to another country, it'll get passed there. Now, they're probably getting strict on it because of the fact that everyone has different rules, and if they have to change it a little bit for another country, that costs money. So it seems they're trying to be safe and make it so that it'll pass through them all at once. That way they don't have to make multiple versions of the game and spend a lot of money. So there is no global standard, and it's going to cost money to go everywhere. So I'm imagining that they just would rather have it be appropriate for every single country. But as one angry gamer points out later in their article, that a lot of games still have a lot of jiggling in their in their engines. And Soul Calibur 6 is an example, as they point out, as they say, you know, it's still got a teen rating despite, you know, clothing destruction and all kinds of stuff. Um, I would say that Soul Calibur 6 is a little bit different than Final Fantasy. Uh, it's a fighting game versus a story-driven narrative. But I, I understand the dilemma and the, and the upset that a lot of people have for this move. Um, Final Fantasy 7 is a very, very loved game. And you're going to upset a lot of purists that want it as close as possible to the original form. But the real problem is that the ethics department talks about realism, which we'll see in a second because I'm going to go over to the bounding in the comics article. 
And there is a little bit of problem with the realism argument. I get that too. And one game gamer makes some really good points because they say both outlets feel to realize Final Fantasy isn't real. And if it were trying to be real, then the first major change you would have to make is to cloud needing a lot more muscle mass because he has that gigantic sword. <laughs> There's nothing real about cloud being able to wield that gigantic buster sword unless maybe, and I don't think they ever explain this, uh, but basically the backstory on Cloud Strife is Hojo had him and Zack in his uh, lab and injected him with, I think, Genova stuff. Basically, he was trying to replicate Sephiroth, and maybe that boosted his strength to control that Buster Sword. I'm not 100% sure on that. But the second point, though, is much more valid. Barrett would need an ammo drum on his back if he was going to have that big attachment uh, machine on his arm for all of the ammo. So that's a really good point. Uh, everybody should be decked out in heavy body Kevlar to avoid <laughs> getting taken out from all of the fire and flames and magical attacks during combat. These are very fair points, and I agree. Uh, it's hard to say, hey, we're putting the sports brawl on for realism purposes, and then, you know, we have all of these other holes. Uh, that's a fair point. I do agree. However, Square Enix decided for some reason that this one character needed to be realistic. And they say, uh, we didn't want her looking unnatural during all of the intense fighting. And that's a fair point, too. And I get that, you know, the game isn't realistic at its core. But a, a woman would have one of those on if they were athletic and, and doing all the things that she's designed to do. So I get both arguments. Personally... I think that it's a fine addition to her. I'm not really hurt about it. I'm just glad that she wasn't made like a uh, two by four in its flatness. Uh, but the Square Enix ethics department is really interesting. I wonder how many other game studios have something like this. Like, oh, no, 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 no. You know, you're going to upset all the people on Twitter if you have this in here. We got we got change that. That's the really interesting thing about this to me is are they doing this preemptively so that they don't get backlash? And as they point out, the remake worked very closely with the company's internal experts to make sure all of the game's content is appropriate. So one thing in my previous video that I pointed out was that a lot of the NPC, except for the crazy loons over at Reset Era, we're okay with her. There wasn't really a big outrage when it came to Tifa. And I was shocked by that because usually they would be a little upset about it. But it seems that the addition of the sports bra silenced a lot of the crazies, which I think was the purpose to an extent. Because I do think they want to stop any of the people from going crazy online. But I also think that they want to be able to cost effectively put this out everywhere in the uh, in the world economy but it's crazy to me that they have a full department dedicated to censoring games i'd never heard of this before and we've have it confirmed now they talk about it here in this other article say we wanted tifa to have abs so that she has more of an athletic body type the ethics department at score enix also said that we had to tighten her down with her chesticles so it doesn't look unnatural during all the intense fighting because of that we added the Black thigh highs and the tank top, which is the sports top, as we discussed before. Uh, it's funny to me that this is the case. Like, what does this say about AAA games now, where you actually have ethics departments that are going around and making these decisions for the games? Because if Square Enix has it, I bet you other companies have this now. And I guarantee you, this is a result of the femme frequency stuff that happened not that long ago. I think that, you know, you have the cost efficiency of getting this all under one rating worldwide, but I do honestly think that the NPC movements have gotten a lot of these companies that make games to say, hey, we got to bring in, you know, these teams to kind of curb all this stuff so that we can actually put the game out and not have crazy people trying to get up in our business and ruin it. Because, well, yes, it's true, and we've made this point many times on this channel, that Japan doesn't care. You have to remember, Japan doesn't really buy games anymore. The PlayStation 4 is much more popular in the West, and a lot of the Japanese video games 
are mostly on mobile now. They don't really buy console games anymore. So Sony has pretty much completely bent the knee on everything. And maybe these are done in anticipation for going through a Sony kind of review. I'm not sure, but I'm kind of concerned that now these video game companies have these ethics departments pretty much telling people what they can and can't do. And that's never a good thing. So this was an interesting development. I'll uh, see if anything more comes out. I'm, I'm really curious if other companies have these kind of departments running around. So we'll find out soon enough. This always all rolls out. So uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this. Do you Are you concerned about this? Do you think these are in every company now? Do you think the fem frequency movie, movement is what pushed all of this? Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, let me know if you're happy or unhappy with their design still. And make sure you're still subscribed. Make sure you still got that notification bell hit. Check out the links below in the description. Make sure you check out my Twitch link. I'm trying to build that platform up so I can start playing games over there. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.